Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a box on a custom grid to help you model and align things in 3ds Max here. So let's say for example we're modeling a bullet right here. So eventually you may want to move this, rotate it, perhaps even scale it. But when you're working on it, you want it to be in a planar working environment, which basically means that Z is up and down here, X is left and right and Y is front and back, you don't want to model it like this because it will be much more difficult to do so. However, in many situations when you're modeling a complex object, you won't always have the luxury of being in a plane of working environment. You'll have objects that are rotated and have a very complex geometry right here. So in this situation, we can create a box. And I'll just give it the same amount of height, width, and length here. i will also like to make it green right here. And I also like to insert a loop in the center right here and just move this out a little bit so I know where the front is just for visual orientation. And also I will go into helpers, grid, and create a custom grid object right here. And I'll press Alt A, align it with the box right here. And I can just call the box something like pivot and then I will use the select and link tool click and hold and let it go over the box and now the grid will follow the box right here I can also make the grid green here as well so let's say for example that working on a box right here and so if you insert some loops here, so let's say for example this is moved like so, and you can make this planar by double clicking right here and using the make planar in this case on the Y axis to straighten things out, like so. And if you move the object and rotate it on the object level, not the sub-object level, but the object level, you can still go in here and use the same command, make it a planner on the y-axis. Because when you use these commands right here, you're using the object's local pair right here. However, if we rotate on the sub-object level, rotate, let's say, the vertices, now if I use make pair on the y-axis, Notice how no longer gives us the results that we want. Also, in many situations, you will want to reset the X form. And after that, it will also not work properly. So it gives us unwanted results in this case. So we can use the box and custom grid right here. You'll also want a script called three point align. I have a video about this. You can find this in the last 20 seconds of this video. So pretty much what we can do is select the grid and right click and activate the grid. Notice how it changes both the custom grid and the default home grid right here when we activate this. We can also right click activate home grid and notice how the custom grid changes and the home grid goes back to the default setting right here. So first we want to figure out how we want to align this. So in this case we want the grid to be right here. So first of all, before we use the three-point align script, we can use the clear text script or simply select in place, click and hold, and let's say right here. So pretty much we want the grid to be kind of like this. So I will use the three-point align script. I've got that set to Alt M. And let's say I want one, two, three. And now I will select three points right here, three vertices. So let's say I want to use the outer points of the box right here. So one, two, three. So I did this because I wanted the grid to be like this. If I had the grid like this, it would align to the grid this way. So now what I can do is with the box selected, I can switch this to the actual pick and pick the pivot. So I'm using the actual pivot of this object right here. And now I can activate snaps and I can right click here 
enable access constraints default hotkey alt d and you can tell because the gizmo changes right here it changes to a small little circle right here i'll make the z-axis active and now what i can do is snap let's say this vertex to right here and so i can press quickly alt d s to turn off axis constraints and snaps and so now if i select this loop and use grid align it's going to align with the grid right here and once again s alt d so snap with this vertex here but using this orientation right here alt d s to quickly turn that off select this and grid align so it may seem like a complex process, but once you get the hang of it, you will find yourself using this a lot to quickly and efficiently model right here with no problems. So another example here is let's say I use Edit Poly and I use Slice Plane or Quick Slice and activate the split option here, which will actually split things into multiple elements right here. And let's say, for example, I slice right here, right click, element, and I will select element and delete. And we can go into border, select, switch to edge, deselect these edges and bridge right here. So now let's say I want to model with this angle right here. We're using the default view. We can't really get that. It's going to be all over the place here. So once again, I'll use the custom helper right here. So I want the grid this time to be aligned. I can also use screen right here, aligned about like this. So using the three point align, one, two, three, and then on the box, on the object, one, two, three. And so now that we're in the sub object level, remember the 3ds Max keeps custom reference coordinate systems depending on whether you're on move, rotate, or scale, and also depending whether you're in object level or in sub object level. So notice how in sub-object level, it's not set to pivot at all, but I can simply change the pivot right here. So now I can easily move it according to this orientation right here. Notice how here I've got this kind of clean curve right here because I was using the pivot for rotation and movement right here. I can also select this and just use set flow if I want to make it clean up a little bit right here. All right, so let's say I want to select these vertices. I want to make it even with this right here. I want to kind of make it go like this. But once again, it's just a matter of putting this in the right position. So I want the grid to be aligned, let's say like this. So three point align, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I will select these vertices, S, Alt, D, X axis here. And as you notice, it snaps right here because we're using this as the orientation here, as direction that's moving. And so it's going to snap to this vertex right here, going in this direction as we move in this direction right here. So Alt D S to quickly turn that off. And so now we've got this right here. Let's say, for example, we've got these polygons right here, and we want this to go all the way through here. So, for example, basically something like this. We want there to be a cut going all the way like this. 
we want it to be of course very accurate and clean right here we want it to be perfectly aligned with these edges right here so three point align one two three and so one two three there we are and so now let's say I activate slice plane and so I can align the slice plane with the grid if I press alt a but notice how right now it's not really working in this case I want to actually switch this to be local I want to use the local pivot right here of the slice plane alt a select the custom grid right here but notice how it's not aligned yet we have to make sure that align orientation is on here which is the rotation so x y and z right here and notice how now we get this line going all the way through here and we can slice i can move this over here activate snaps axis constraints x-axis and also snap to this vertex right here and slice so now i have these vertices and edges aligned with these vertices and edges right here All right, now let's say I want to symmetrify this object according to this angle right here. So if I just use symmetry, I have to really work with the mirror right here to kind of rotate it and try to get it about right here. So let's use our box right here. In this case, I don't even have to use three point align. I can just use select and place right here and place it right here because this situation I just want the z-axis I just want it to be oriented like this right here so now I can activate symmetry mirror I'll set this to be local flip alt a select the box and there we go in this case I may want to change the mirror axis right here and there we are now we have the symmetry happening right here Let's say I select these polygons right here, grow, inset, use the regularizer script. With the regularizer script, you want to make sure that you have this set to view. Because if I set to screen and then use regularizer script, notice how those give me the desired results. But if I switch this back to view, I now get this result right here. So let's say I want to detach this as a clone here I'll just give this a darker color here and I can apply shell right here what I can also do is simply copy this symmetry modifier right here and since this cylindrical object was detached from this object it has the same kind of pivot setup so I can paste the same modifier right here and it gives me this result right here so let's say I want to rotate this object around the cylinder right here. Well, if I use its local pivot right here, the gizmo is right here because that's where the object that we started with was originally. So that's not going to help us right here. So if we try and rotate around here, we're going to get this result right here. So what we want to do is we want to change the pivot of the cylinder right here. So right now it's pivot is right here. So what I will do is just go back to other poly here. What I want to do is to have a vertex directly in the center right here. So what I will do in this case is delete these polygons and select these edges and simply hold shift and just scale this inwards here. Hold control and click here to convert to vertex, weld and just increase the weld threshold. So we want a vertex directly in the center right here. So normally you don't want this kind of topology right here, but in this case it's going to help us to create and accurately position the pivot right here. So once we've got this kind of topology right here, with this vertex being in the center, we want to use another script called Align Object to Direction. And I have a video on how you can use that as well. So I'll select the box here, activate the script, and as you click here, you want to also hold down Shift because that will actually move your object. If you don't hold down Shift, it's simply going to change the direction, but it won't actually move it. So be sure to hold down Shift as you click on Align, let's say, Z-axis. 
and then click this vertex right here. And that's why I want this vertex to be in the center because this script uses vertices to position things. So I want this vertex right here, click on that. Then click on this vertex right here. And the boxy position like so. And so now if I switch to rotate and switch to the box and also use the third option right here, click and hold, use the third option. Because if we use, for example, the pivot point, you can notice how the orientation changes. Let's say local, it's like this. If I use pick or pivot, the orientation has changed, but the gizmo itself remains here where the object's pivot is. But if I switch to the third option, it's actually going to change the pivot to be right here. And now, notice I get this perfect rotating where the cylinder should rotate. In many situations when you're modeling, you actually want to use the first option right here because, for example, if you select these polygons here, when you're working, you want the gizmo to be right here. You don't want the gizmo to be where the actual box is, even though you can still model using this method right here. So in this case, we want the orientation of the gizmo to be right here, but we actually want it to be at the location of the selected sub-objects. But in the case of the rotation, we actually want it to be in this location. So using this technique, you can have any cylinder, you can extrude a cylinder from anywhere. You can have a cylinder be wherever you want and rotate around that position as well. can paste that symmetry modifier right back here, apply shell, edit poly, and we can continue modeling right here. And because the object, the box, is still right here, we can also model this like so with this kind of same orientation right here. We can also use things such as make planar, which will just try and average things out here. It can be very helpful in these kind of situations. So using these techniques, you can pretty much model at any angle here and you can easily line things up here. What you can do here with the custom grid active is that when you create a new object here, let's say for example, another box right here, it's going to be created on the custom grid right here. So it's also a good way of just kind of quickly adding objects here as well. So using this technique, you can pretty much model at any angle here. You can extract cylinders, align them, align the symmetry modifier, and just kind of model at any angle here and align things with much more complex objects. Thank you for watching and take care.